to drive our cars very fast, and share that the excitement is not just going fast but knowing we're getting away with something. We may think this doesn't apply to us, until our sponsor suggests that we try obeying all traffic laws for a week, just as an experiment. While some of us find acceptable ways to chase the rush throughout our recovery, others find the need settles down after a while, or the wreckage we create just gets to be too much. Sometimes, without an outlet for our energy, we just sit in our own anxiety. It can be surprising to learn that anxiety comes from the same source as our enthusiasm, it can be energy if we channel it, or it can be incredibly destructive. The same power that fuels our destructive impulses can fuel our excitement, creativity, and ambition. It can drive us to adventure or chaos. Like so much of what we uncover about ourselves, it can be an asset or a defect, depending on how we use it. When I found myself in self-centered fear, said one member, I would take risks that could ultimately cause me to lose everything. I was living on the edge clean so I could feel something other than the abyss of not using. I filled the void with things like gambling, shopping, anything that made me feel powerful when I am powerless. Now that I can see myself more clearly, I realize that I have to be more aggressive with treating my disease, taking its deadly nature into account. At some moments, it may feel like we are holding on to our recovery with both hands. There are times when we just pull this through an obsession to lose or act out in some other way. There are times when fear of our disease leads us to shut down, resist change, or fear novelty because anything that takes us out of our routine might put us at risk. But recovery doesn't always have to be about ducking. When we know our lives are in the care of a loving power greater than ourselves, we are able to let go. Some of us express this very literally. Going skydiving or bungee jumping is a way to really step out. For most of us, though, letting go is a little less dramatic. We start to experience life as an adventure, and apply that willingness to try in other areas of our lives. Wellness and health. Life is an adventure, and we are able to go further and experience more than we had ever dreamed. We are able to live beyond the barriers we set for ourselves when we surrender to the real limits before us. Another door opens every time one closes. Self-acceptance comes a willingness to creatively explore new directions. Many of us have regrets about time or abilities lost, but when we really start to explore with an open mind, we find that we have options we may never have considered. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. 54. We have had a difficult relationship with the word, good. We have spent much of our lives rebelling against the things others expected of us, but when we get clean we find we have long lists of things we think we should be doing. We can be so full of should that no matter what we are doing, it feels wrong. Our expectations of ourselves can be so overwhelming that they cripple us. Part of developing new habits we can sustain is finding better reasons to do them than that we should. Behavior that brings its own rewards is much likelier to become part of our lives than the things we take on because we imagine it's what we should do. We may have to persist a while before we find that reward, however. Whether it's the peace we find in the course of exercise, 
realizing when the gratification of seeing ourselves develop or improve skills, we are pleased to find that we can keep the commitment to ourselves. For some of us, exercising is something we do, or think we should do, to take care of our health. But for others, it's deeper than that. When I'm running, then one member, I get a sense of prayer. My mind becomes clear. Finding a spiritual connection in exercise is easier for some of us than meditating while sitting still. Exercise can be easier to keep up when it is part of our spiritual practice than when it's simply a matter of doing what we think we are supposed to do. Some of us see self-care as an ongoing part of the event process. We start by not engaging in self-abuse and gradually learn to treat our body, mind, and spirit with honor and respect. When we care for our own well-being as we have an honored friend, we begin to feel differently about who we are and who we can become. We shift from, I should, or, I have to, to, I get to, and find that caring for ourselves is a bit more, it's a privilege. When we treat ourselves with compassion, we learn to value ourselves. Exercising regularly can be a way to act on our new self-respect, and to build a different relationship with our body. We can let go of some of the emotional turmoil about what we look like or think we look like, and begin to love ourselves as we are. We are able to walk with dignity and treat others with respect. We start to view ourselves with a sense of unity, let go of the idea that my body is separate from my spirit or myself. We feel refreshed and renewed physically and realize that we are able to push ourselves beyond what we imagined our limits to be. Setting physical goals for ourselves and achieving them can have immense rewards. As we find freedom from our disease, Practicing the principles of the program, we learn that discipline is actually a part of that freedom. We have the ability to pursue our dreams, and we get there one goal at a time. We may resist meeting goals or getting too healthy. We hold ourselves back from all we can be, either because we feel we don't deserve it or because we are afraid of the change it will bring. Sometimes praying for willingness to begin the process of change. An act as simple as preparing a proper meal for ourselves can be the first thing in a new change. As we incorporate healthy patterns in our lives we begin to feel refreshed, renewed, and willing to set new goals for ourselves. It can take a long time to let go of the belief that somehow the ordinary rules of life don't apply to us, from the speed limit to the laws of physics. Having courted death for so long, some of us seem to think we are immune to it. Even though we know better, the powerful, living clean approval graph for decision at WSP 2012. Chapter 4 our physical self. 55. Sense of entitlement that enables us to do what was required to maintain a habit doesn't go away immediately, and many of us struggle with the feeling that being seen is such a triumph that the world ought to celebrate and give us what we want. For some of us, that false sense of entitlement runs so deep that taking care of ourselves does not occur to us as our responsibility, that had been the task of our partners, medical professional, or the warden. Our reading suggests that, through our inability to accept personal responsibility, we were actually creating our own problems. It benefits us to live with our sponsors and consider what our personal responsibility really is. What 
are we responsible for, and what are we not? When we look at it, we may find that we feel more responsible for others than we do for ourselves. Learning to care for ourselves is part of taking personal responsibility, and it can be surprisingly difficult. One of our Alzheimer's used to share that, there is nothing sadder than an addict with a high tolerance for pain, and the truth is many of us struggle with that. Some of us have endured great physical hardship or abuse, many of us have borne terrible emotional suffering. It makes sense that we take pride in being tough. Strength seems like its own reward, and it's certainly a survival skill we're not too keen on letting go. For a lot of us, that strength is a part of our identity, both in terms of how we see ourselves and how we want to show ourselves to the world. What could be wrong, after all, with being able to tolerate so much? The answer is in the question. When we see a using addict with a high tolerance for pain going on to the bitter end, we can see how needless this suffering is. But in our own lives we may not notice when we are doing the same thing. As we work the steps, we come to see that we tolerate more than we need to, and probably more than is healthy for us. One member shared, I no longer live at the animal level in obvious ways, but when I ignore persistent pain in my body and just wish it would go away, that's still a form of needless suffering. Learning that the rules really do apply to us means that when something is wrong, we stop and take a look at it. Being a good steward of our bodies means accepting that they need care and maintenance. As we recover, many of us find that we have a new importance in the lives of our family. We develop deep friendships, we become useful in our work and our community. Where once we may have been a burden to others, we now find that we are important to many people. We matter. Not taking care of ourselves, living self-destructively in recovery, we find the old lie, I'm only hurting myself, still falls flat. For the people who care about us, failing to care for ourselves is frustrating at best. Too often, it leads to the result that once again they are taking care of us. Taking care of ourselves is an act of amends not only to ourselves, but to the people who love us, and to our higher power. It's a way of showing gratitude for being alive. Illness. Many of us suffer from diseases other than addiction. Some may be a direct consequence of our addiction or things that happened while we were using. Others may have nothing to do with the disease of addiction but certainly impact our recovery. Sometimes it seems like they take over our entire lives. Learning to use the tools we gain and not to cope with our other challenges is part of living life on life's terms. Living Clean Approval Graph for Decision in WSC 2012 56 When we suffer, or see someone else suffering, we want to make sense of it, and we look for an explanation. It's a good impulse that can go sideways. We want an explanation, but we end up placing blame or passing judgment. Often in the moments when we most need comfort and care, we are angry, at ourselves, at our higher power, at anyone in between. We push away what we need the most. Fantasies about what is or is not, fair, keep in resentment and self-pity. Sometimes when we are trying to support our friends by helping them find an explanation, it can feel like we are just keeping on more blame. We can shift perspective slightly and look for the lesson rather than the explanation. It may be 
that what we really need to do is set all the questions aside and just get through the day. When something is going on with our health, we have a choice to accept what is happening and deal with it or pretend it is not there. A great deal of the time we choose to ignore what we know, either because we are afraid or because we don't want to handle with it. For some of us, the fear of undergoing medical treatment is understandable, especially if that brings with it the possibility of having to take medication. Weighing risks and benefits is not easy. Finding a doctor we trust makes the process easier. We carefully consider the possibility that leaving a problem untreated may create more problems than before. Turning something over is not the same as ignoring it. When we take action and leave the results to a power greater than ourselves, we are turning it over. However, when we don't take responsibility for our part, but wait for a magical answer, we are not working the third step, we are being irresponsible. Faith is not the same as wishing. There is a difference between denial and refusal. When we are in denial we don't notice. The evidence may be glaringly obvious, but we do not see it. Once we can say, I'm in denial, it is no longer quite true. At that point we are making a choice to accept what is real, or to turn away from it and pretend. When we refuse to admit the truth, we are in danger. Rebellion can be deadly for us. Acting as if, is a tool we can use for better or for worse. The fear that keeps us from moving forward can stem from many causes. Other people's opinions of us may still seem important enough to risk our lives for the stigma of disease, whether from society at large, our loved ones, or even our friends and not, keeps many of us from seeking testing or treatment. Our own judgment and fear can be surprising as well. In early recovery, we learn about projection. What really bothers us about someone else is likely true for us too. So it is with this fear, what we imagine others to be saying about us is often what we are thinking ourselves. We may need to drive ourselves to take action long before we are done working through our feelings about it. We may be surprised that a dental problem, for example, could return us to the sixth and seventh steps. But when we recognize that our fear is preventing us from taking care of ourselves, we can see the work we have to do. Sometimes it can help us to look at this action as part of the events process. We are dealing with the wreckage of our past. A member shared, I spent a fair portion of my second year in recovery getting my teeth fixed, and I noticed many others doing the same thing. It was a huge self-esteem thing, and an amends to my body. It may help to see it as part of a tense step, addressing what is wrong in the present moment. Some of us have felt that we created our health problems as a result of our addiction, and that this is simply our lot. The basic text tells us that although we are not living clean approval draft for decision at WSC 2012, Chapter 4, Our Physical Selves, 57. Responsible for our addiction, we are responsible for our recovery. It may help us to consider that this applies to our bodies as well as our spirits. We may also be genuinely afraid of being sick. Whether it's the particular diagnosis we're considering or the general idea of having something wrong with us, this may be a kind of powerlessness we don't feel at all ready to accept. We may fear that our health issues will create new uncertainty in our finances, our careers, 
not uncommon, but it is dangerous and frequently unhelpful. When we start trading on promises and expectations in our prayer, we are setting ourselves up for spiritual crisis. A higher power is not a vending machine. When we accept life on life's terms, we come to understand that the terms are not negotiable. Miracles happen to us and around us all the time. The very fact that we are alive and clean to face this challenge is a miracle, and there are always more unfolding if we look for them. Gratitude may be most needed when it is hardest to find. Looking for the reasons we have to be grateful in a moment of crisis can make all the difference. The daring or demanding miracles doesn't seem to work very well. We take action and turn the results over. Surrender in times of illness can mean a lot of different things. We surrender to the process. We surrender to the fact of mortality and to the possibility of survival. Surrender in this sense does not mean giving up. One member in the midst of a long illness said, It was pretty easy for me to surrender to the possibility of dying. It was a different kind of surrender for me to become willing to fight for my life. There is no model of a recovering addict, no one right way to do things. Some of us, taking an honest look at ourselves and our lives, really don't want to live that long. It may sound odd, but it's true. Longevity is not a universal goal or necessarily a universal good. Some of us make choices of knowing they will shorten our lives. We may choose to smoke. We may choose to eat in a way we know is harmful. We may make a decision to stop or refuse treatment for an illness. A member whose parents had a difficult old age said, I'm not going to do that to my daughter. I have a life I love, but that doesn't mean I want to play the hand to the end. We may be surprised at some of the decisions we make, or the strength of our feelings about them. These decisions are deeply personal and we make them in accordance with our values. We want to be certain that we are acting on our beliefs, not opening a draft for decision at WSC 2012. 58. Reservation that could lead us back to losing. Each of us finds a balance we can live with between taking perfect care of ourselves and neglecting ourselves destructively. Whatever choices we make, what matters is that we know we are making them, that we understand we have a choice, and we can Consider it honestly and openly. We are always on a continuum between health and illness, between action and wishing, between living in accordance with our beliefs and betraying ourselves and our values. We come back to the tools of the program again and again to fine-tune the balance, and to find a way to bring ourselves back to a life we are comfortable with. Our process of inventory, amend, and surrender is an unending source of improvement for us. We find our values and learn what it means to live by them. Over time we can let go of our expectations for what we thought life was supposed to be, or what we think others expect of us, and live according to the values we find within ourselves. As we learn what is true for us, we find that we are less compelled either to be perfect or to destroy ourselves. We are free to live lives according to our own choosing and design. Disability Just for today, says our reading, I will try to get a better perspective on my life. Even though most of us addicts resist change, we know that it is beneficial for us to change our perception by changing our perspective. Nothing changes our perspective quite like the experience of disability. Chances are, if we live a full life, we will at some point experience disability, whether for a relatively short time or in a way that changes our lives permanently. In either case, the lessons that we learn through the experience can enrich our lives and broaden our understanding, even if some of our choices are 
this seems preposterous and infuriating. You may think, you just don't get it. You have no idea what this is like. Self-pity is no less dangerous when we feel justified than when we know we are out of line. Either way, it can kill us. If we have been around a while, we know that gratitude is almost always the shortest road to relief. Some of us find gratitude in the knowledge that it can be worse, and find relief in helping. Living clean approval graph for decision at WS. Some of us this is cold comfort, we find gratitude when we